Hi, this is Jack Downs. I can't be with you for class today, so I'm making this video lesson. Uh, first is this file about the color one exercise, the exercise that is due next class, an exercise you need to complete in order to do other exercises that are related to it. Also a little unusual in that this is an exercise that comes largely from the book, so you actually will use your book to complete it. So you're going to watch this video, which you will find on Moodle, and you've already found, obviously. And you'll see there are two more videos that follow it, uh, which is my color lecture and presentation. Um, you can do this one first if you want, and then do the others after. It doesn't much matter. Um, in the end, you must you should do all three because uh, there, there's information in the other two that are on future quizzes. Um, and of course, there is also a presentation in PDF form, which you can use to follow along. That PDF is on Moodle too. So on to the exercise. So the color one exercise, and here is the assignment we're looking at right here, the same as you should have in your hand, or you can download if you wish. Um, does require a download of a file called uh, the bistro file from Moodle. So you'll go to the color one download folder and download that. I'm suggesting this folder structure here as usual, a folder structure, project folder, and then a root folder called color one in your last name, and you down name, download the bistro file into there. I'm suggesting that you change the name of the bistro file to bistro in your last name as is listed here. Um, I have mine. Uh, mine is just called bistro at this time, but you would obviously you could do, do a rename on yours. So the instructions say to go to Moodle and download that file. Good. Um, and rename it, okay, and open in Notepad++, okay, then to go to page 283 of your text and follow the instructions for 13.1. Um, that's going to instruct you about typing lots of codes, CSS codes, that change the color of different objects. Um, and be aware that, as the instructions here say, that the file you have downloaded, the Bistro file, is not exactly the same as the file that she uses in her in her in the exercise. It's very similar. You won't really notice much difference, but there are a few differences if you look carefully. You can do the exercise with the, with the file you have fine, and you should use my file. Do not use any other file. Make sure you use the file that you have downloaded. Then um, the only other only additional instructions I have beyond hers is that you add a comment to the CSS. So this must be a CSS comment, and that's different from an HTML comment. You should look that up in your textbook to see how to make it. You should know by now, though. Um, and then when you've tested it, your file is complete. You zip the folder and, of course, uh, upload it to Moodle. A few other hints and suggestions. Um, please, you should, you should see that she talks about in her instructions about condensing hex color codes. What's a hex color code? You should have read about it. And I'm mentioning it in these other two videos that follow. So you will get more information out there, but you should have already read about it. You can condense the hex color codes. And also, she uses, this is a key thing, this is an area that some of you will get wrong. So be, be prepared. She uses something called RGBA color in her header area. You may need to read about this first. You should have read about it already. However, you may want to review the, review the instructions. I believe it's page 271 that she goes over, yeah, 271. On page 271, she goes over this RGBA color. It involves adding opacity, which is transparency, to an RGB color. And RGB is, of course, another color system that we use, um, different from hex in some ways, which you should write about. And you will have to type in some codes as part of the exercise regarding it. Um, so that's RGBA color, and you should review page 271 to see how you use it. Otherwise, things won't work out right. Um, I also strongly suggest you look through some of her HTML and CSS. That's the stuff you've been given for this exercise. It's very interesting code. You can learn a lot by looking at it. I will show you some of it now. And don't worry that some of the links, the, the navigation links in particular, don't work. They are dummy links, so they are not going to work. OK, let's go look at the exercise. I've opened up my Bistro file in Notepad++, um, and let's run it and see what it looks like. Okay, here it is. That looks fine. Um, it's almost all 
it's, it's more than HTML, obviously. Um, it has some CSS in it because you can see the margins and so on, and the fonts are particular fonts. Yet um, there is very little, in fact, nothing in the way of color added. This link color is simply the starting point of links, how they start looking, right? So now, looking at this file, you're going to go into the, you follow in the instructions, you're going to go into the CSS area here, and here it is, this is open style and closed style, which is embedded in this document, and you're going to continue on, you're going to add lots of links of styling links for the all the different styling levels, uh, styling states, I mean. You can add color for the H1 and the H2, and this header area is going to have color in particular. You're going to be doing that. Um, you're going to add all this stuff, uh, which is all in her instructions. Um, a couple of things I wanted to mention about the code that she uses that's interesting. First of all, look at this strange link up here. There's a link to something. It says it's a style sheet, but it says it's got this family Marco 1. What is that? It's also going to a Google font site. This is a web font, which you haven't used before. Web fonts are many free ones, and some you can premium ones you can pay for, available in a number of places, but most people use Google for them. Google has a whole web font site. And what it means is, unlike the font family choices, like this one right here for body, which we have done, right? That is a font family, which is nicely constructed, um, and includes one, two, three, four, five fonts, and six is the generic. Unlike those, this calls for a font that is not probably nobody's going to have, or, or it's going to be rare. And, it, and it's done it after going and getting the font, right? We went and got the font from Google. So this Marco 1 is the font that's used in the H1. We put it in a stack, just in case for some reason it's not available. But that is the, the font that is given you. This is somewhat unusual font here. It's sort of a serif and sort of not a serif. It's an unusual font, and that particular font is used here, is, uh, is Marco 1. So it's a web font, and it's downloaded as part of the website. You also see we have a body font, which is sans serif, and we have an H2 font, which is different also, it's, which is a different serif font. So we actually have three fonts in this little page, which is a lot. But um, what else do you want to look at? Well, I could see that... Um, she has some interesting use of some unusual selector types. There's a plus in that one. You should look that up and see what that is. She uses she uses a class selector. She uses a, a combination of a class selector and something else in with a in a group selector. Um, she uses a descendant selector. Um, on and on, some interesting selector types for you to look through. So how is this all going to turn out? Well, when you're done, it's going to look like this. You'll see that you have a color on the H1 now, right? You have a font style, uh, sorry, link styling. Look at the link styling. It's got a hover on it now, so it hovers. And also, I'll click on this link. And I will now go get out of this and go back. You also see there's a difference between the visited links. So this is the visited one. It's kind of grayer and the color on what we call a static state, a link before it's been visited. See the difference in the color? I don't think either of these links, link colors work that great because they're a little hard to see. But there is a difference here. Um, what else are you going to see? Oh, there's a color on the H2s. That's true. But in general, one of the big things is this, this is the RGBA background color area here. It's created a slightly, a partly opaque background color. And because we used, used RGBA, therefore it isn't coming over the top and partly obscuring these colors here. These are more, these are still vivid and visible. And the background color is there, but it's not just plain white. It's partly transparent. It's like I can kind of see through it, which is an interesting idea, a nice touch. Um, so that's what it's going to look like when you're done. That's the RGBA color right there. So don't make sure to read about that. Otherwise, use the instructions in your textbook. And then before or after continuing and finishing this, um, please watch the other two videos, which are my presentation on color in general.